welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Michael Riley, Sam Prince, Samsonite Prime, uh, what, whatever you guys want to call me. <laughs> I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And before we get started, we want to do a special shout out to our sponsor, Cars Weebly's. Thank you, uh, Cars Weebly's, for sponsoring the podcast. If you want singles, hit them up. Yeah, short and sweet. So this week, uh, we're going to go a little bit of more a positive note <laughs> than the past few. Uh, we're going to let Sam gush all about the RVA trip. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I expected. Okay, but yes, it was good. Podcast. I've been watching too much Parks and Rec, man. Ron Swanson. <laughs> Event was good. Had good people. Enjoyed it. Good job. The best. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> the best. No, the event was a solid 10 out of 10. Um, Chris Adams, Adam Lane, Adam Duncan, solid 10 out of 10. People, um, RVA, 9 out of 10. Amazing. <laughs> only, only discount is, I mean, it, it was close. 9.9. They're just, it was no Kansas, but it was close. Like, well, is anywhere really Kansas though? Uh, Kansas There's is no home, place like home. Can- yeah. Kansas is home. <laughs> yeah, but no, for real, the RVA, the locals, everyone there was so cool. I met so many really cool people. Um, so how's the shop shout out? out? I've never seen pictures of the inside really. I've seen like it tables, was, but it was sick. So you know how like if you go to Armada Games or some of the other bigger stores, they have the giant like Warhammer tables, right? Yeah, yeah. They have these there all over, except they're on wheels. So whenever you want to have a tournament, you can just push them off to the side and set up additional tables. It'll be a fantastic Crystal Cup for sure. You don't want to miss the Crystal Cup there. That's sweet, sweet. No, that's one I'd uh, actually like to attend. It's one of the ones travel for. Right, yeah. No, it'll be fantastic. The event ran well um, from start to finish. It started about 30 minutes late due to some people running in traffic, um, and yet it finished at a really reasonable time um, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Okay, so um, before we dive into the event, uh, how was it being able to go out with the guys in RVA the night before, and I guess the night after the tournament? Well, like community-wise, the, the night he the doesn't night remember, be- obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the night before, um, we didn't go out. We we played a couple test games. Um, I built my deck, obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that was it. It was really chill. We we didn't arrive until six. We did have uh, dinner, um, which was which was uh, well. We, we we played in an event is the thing. We played in like a pre warm up event where Serena managed to four zero everybody uh, with mono red, and they're like, "What in the world?" Um, <laughs> Neo Bahama who plays card. that card. But no, 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 it was very similar to Adam uh, Adam Lane's list, who has a fantastic list. And um, you know, I had said this before in another cast, but it was amazing that I'd never seen Adam's list before. Um, he made a run with it, and like it was so close, card for card, to Serena's list. The only thing is, he's playing the brow, which I'm not a huge fan of. But he made a case for, it, and I I still wouldn't play it, but I could respect the reason that that he was playing it. Um, but yes, yeah, so we played in an event prior. Um, she did amazing with that deck. I lost in top four. Ian Velez won the whole thing to get a sweet uh, like Cloud Sephiroth play mat. That's like cloth. Uh, one of those two person oh, play mats. Sweet. He's got to love yeah, that, Mister Final Fantasy Seven nut. No, yeah, it was it was really really cool. Um, <laughs> as far as going out, the Saturday night trip afterwards was a solid level six. Um, was very close to level seven. Oh yeah, I saw some um, of the chats. Yeah, <laughs> was insane. There's too much to be said. We'll have to have a whole separate podcast on it. But it can it got, be even said on a podcast? I don't yeah. know. It got wild. It was not. <laughs> It was a wild night. It was fun. Well, Alejandro uh, and Chris Adams were both involved. So no, Chris oh, no. stayed home unfortunately. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had some stuff to do. Um, it was uh, it was uh, Alejandro, uh, Stephen, myself, oh, okay, yep. Ian, Serena, and um, what was left of Alfred by the end of the night is a different story. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a good time though. Oh, All right, so for drunk stories. Uh, <laughs> So regarding the event, um, you chose to run Earth Water Monsters. Uh, so well, it chose well, it monsters. chose me, but it chose me, but yeah. So is this a, a last minute deck audible? I'm guessing. Not yes entirely, because no. he sent me a list before they left, or like as they're on their way. It's like, hey, I'm probably playing as, this as we're on our way. Yeah. So I settled in but you uh, a the bunch night. Of cards. The night. Yeah, I did. <laughs> of course, the night before I left, I had settled into um, deciding that I was going to play um, either Wind Water or um 
Earthwater, but I was either going to play the Prince deck um, or Monsters deck. I hadn't quite decided. Um, and then right before I left, I settled into Monsters. Um, and it really was legit. Um, RB didn't say that they were garbage, the Zagnols, but I guess someone was complaining about Zagnols, and RB was like, yeah, they're not even that good. I'm like, Phew. They're pretty good, yeah. But I, but I think really Arby's point was that they weren't broken, and they weren't broken, but they were pretty damn good. They were. I, I wouldn't cut them. I I had two in my original list, went down to one, and then was like, you know what? I just always want to see this card, so I'm gonna play three of them. <laughs> oh, you did go up to three. Actually, I can just pull up the oh, list I, right here. I I did play three. Yeah. So some list. of the, you uh you had one Calbrena. Uh, I think you had two before when you initially sent me your list. I maybe had zero. I thought, but. Maybe I think there's definitely one, but uh, and then yeah. the card I want to talk about is how good was Ozma? Because I didn't see that on stream from the matches I saw. I still have to go back and finish um, the other ones, but it was really good. If it it was really good, and um, well, all right, I'll just give you an example of just how how good it was. Um, the two games I lost, one of them, the two matches I lost uh, was to John Schreier, where I did not draw an Ozma in the top 40 cards in my deck. And by that, I mean, I didn't and more realistically, I had them all three in my opening hand along with two brawn, the searchers um, in my deck. And so I had no way to shuffle. And so all three Ozmas were on the bottom of the deck um, with my searchers. So that is one of the reasons I lost that match. It was a really good match. Um, but also against Colin Rupert, uh, the Osmo Special was going to win me the game if he did not uh, EX burst um, the Kuchelain with the Osmos. I, I attacked with Brave, then Osmo Special, he EX burst the Kuchelain to kill my Layla. Otherwise, the game was just over. Um, Ooh, that's rough. He, and he didn't even know that. He didn't even know what my hand was like. Um, and he'd asked me, like, what'd you have? But I was like, well... I didn't really have much, but the truth was is that I, I had a I, he was dead. But I thought like, well, if I play him in the finals or something, you know, I don't want him to understand the lines of play that I was thinking, which makes sense. I mean, I, I like Colin Rupert a great amount, um, but it doesn't mean I want him inside my head during <laughs> some, uh, <laughs> during the Swiss. So, yeah. Now Osmo was very very good. One more and change that was Kyle McGinty one hundred percent all nice. on him. Just just kept telling me, yes, you should play it. Yes, you should play it. So. And there's one more card I wanted to ask about was Hilda. So you didn't have that in the initial sure. list you sent me. Uh, yeah. The Galdas edition makes sense. Delita makes sense. Uh, but that was the one card that obviously was very sweet. It's another enabler yeah. for the Zango you're talking about. What? Uh, would, how'd you move towards that? Or who, well, who Hilda, put that in your head? H Hilda's like a good... Um, I did. I oh, just okay. I brought it as one of the considerations. I had Hilda. I had Larsa. I had all the all the things that could turn on Zagnol I brought with me <clears throat> as far as cards go. Um you know, it's it's a lot of Josh Good commented that he thought that there wasn't enough to draw uh, like opening backups, and I don't think that's true at all. Uh, Hilda is an opening backup, especially if you play the Viking. It's mm -hmm. like fine, but there are times where you have like two Zagnals, and then you play Layla Viking, and then play Hilda, and you draw four cards, and you will never lose that game. Oh right, because like they act. You can stack to activate before she resolves. You resolve. can stack to activate the Zagnals. Yeah, so you go from like. There was a game where I just had just the three Zagnols, and then I played Hilda. And I'm like, activate, activate, draw three, attack you, attack you, attack you. How do you lose? You don't. So. Seems pretty good. It was good. Yeah. So yeah, how was the... Was uh, good. You guys played seven rounds of Swiss, correct? Right, seven rounds, yeah. How, was, uh, how did the Swiss rounds go? I know you went, You said you lost two games, but... I did, yeah. I lost to Colin Ripper and John Schreier. I'll probably just do a separate video for that um, because it's gonna. I'll go into a great amount of detail. But to mm -hmm. keep it short and sweet, um, the, the deck performed. It performed exactly how I wanted it to. Um, it's great in a, an aggressive room, and I've never seen a more aggressive um, region than RVA. I mean, like, everybody was on Scions or Mono Red, and, like, very, very aggressive decks. Um, so it performed really, really well. Um, I can't complain about any of my Swiss rounds. You know, like I said, I lost a really, uh, close game to John Schreiner, the, um, the guy who is part, part of the, uh, the revolution of the Prince deck, which is a really cool deck. It was something I considered playing. Um, and I had him dead to rights. If he didn't have a summon to break my Cleone to make me deck out. Cause I was down to two cards in deck. 
Um, Ooh, so it's very yeah. close game. Uh, and he played very well. I had a Galdez that I attacked in and he knew like, I, I have to take this because if I block it, it's going to kill the Galdez and Sam's going to make me discard. Uh, ended up not mattering. He ended up drawing two more summons. So we had a total of three summons to break my Cleon. Um, but it was a really close game. I, Swiss went well. I lost the two rounds that I lost to, which felt like they were both right within me winning. Um, the toughest game, like, weren't, weren't even the two that I lost. The toughest game um, was round seven. Uh, my my win and maybe in. Then I played against Jim Doodle's deck, um, the <laughs> Moogle's deck. And it just had a really good start. It hit its Moogle right away. It hit Moogle um, FCC right away. And just uh, it was off to, like, exactly what it wanted it to do. So it was a tough uphill game. Um, but my opponent probably thought the opposite. Like, it looked like I was in control the whole time, but I was I was nervous. Minwoo definitely helps in that matchup. Uh, Unless you didn't have it. <laughs> not really, right? Like, not like if they know what they're doing because they have so many Gertie activations. Like, Oh, sure. If, it, yeah, if they can combo the Gertie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had Gertie, like, turn one. So, yeah, it... It, it was a good matchup for sure, but it, it felt tough. Um, I was more sweating if I was going to make the cut or not because going into seventh round, I was at table 10, and I'm like, well, I'm just dead. I'm <laughs> super dead. And then they did a repairing. They had messed up the pairings, and I moved to table five. All right, so I'm like, okay, this is like solid eighth or ninth place right on the bubble, right? This has got to be. And Hunter Nance was table six. I'm like, okay, um, so when the the uh, when it was called out and he made seventh, I'm like, oh god, I actually have a chance. I have a <laughs> chance. I have a chance. I because I thought I was really dead, and then they called me an eighth, and I was like, it was a. I mean, I've probably never been more nervous. Maybe I was more nervous about you not making the petite cup in Kansas finals because they took forever to announce that part. Yeah, uh, they really made it sweat until the very end. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, I was really nervous about not making it. My, it came down to, like, the third tiebreaker. Um, it was close. And they say the third tiebreaker will never be used. <laughs> well, I mean, tiebreaker one and two. Like, tiebreaker one on the paper is, like, your strength of schedule, right? Right, right. Which but is, really, I'm, I'm saying tiebreaker number three. I'm really taking the the actual points as your first tiebreaker. So, right? okay. so we have the shared points and the shared strength of schedule, which I don't know how that happens unless they have the exact same schedule, which is possible. But like if we were both at 5.16, I imagine, or 5.19, I forget which one it is. Uh, I imagine that we had very shared um, opponent range. Right. So yeah. So Swiss went well. Yeah. All right. So how about uh, top cut? Yeah. I know you got paired up against Steven Arboleta. Yeah, I, I played against Steven. I had, uh, I played against Steven's deck in the Swiss as well. Not against Steven himself, uh, but I played against Steven's deck in Swiss. And I was I felt really comfortable navigating that matchup. Um, I wasn't sweating much at all. Um, Steven's a good player, but the matchup is just so heavily favored uh, for me that, yeah, I mean – once I once I know what I'm looking for, I'm just going to go with it. So Yeah, I think because your deck is obviously built around monsters, you have a lot of control for when you give him targets to remove. So right, yeah. his Shantotos are not nearly as useful. He can't dot a Luma Ping when he wants to. You yeah. can kind of control I, when he gets to. Every card in his deck is probably dead uh, besides his EX Burst. Like him hitting Yojimbos and Cecil's are the biggest threat, and I dodged um, all... What what of it matters? All twelve of them, like mm -hmm. because like I get I get fourteen point six of them can be ex first and he hit none of them. So well he, he had a star civil and a Cecil, but neither of them mattered I think because right maybe it was Ian that hit that, but he hit the star civil. But yeah, so it didn't matter. Um, yeah, yeah, the matchup felt really in control. It's just a hard matchup for him, you know. Sometimes right, right. you get those matchups in your top cut, and you know I it, like I'm no stranger to that, right? Like. I had some very nightmare mirror mat or nightmare matchups in my top eight in both Kansas uh, Petit and Crystal Cup. Right. Sometimes you just gotta try to get through it, you know. So I got lucky. Uh, he got unlucky, and those things are gonna happen. Right. And then after that, you moved to top four uh, for the rematch of the. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> was not happy that he started with like turn two Alua. Like I was just no. 
We can no, not again <laughs> the PTSD not, not from like Illinois. Not like this, right? <laughs> this is not how I'm going out. Um, but then you got your revenge on Illinois game three, which was I did. Must yeah. have felt pretty good. <laughs> the the thing too is that like I I kind of pride myself on my ability to adapt. So I was Ian's only loss actually in Swiss. Um, I was able to just adapt to what his deck was trying to do, um, and worked out just fine. Game two, I guess, Ian, I just drew really bad. Like, incredibly bad, actually. Um, actually, I, I drew that way against Steven turn game one, too, but I got really lucky. But I drew so terrible against Ian game two. And then, like, I had a huge setup. And he's dead if I draw Earth card, anything. Like, it, any Earth card, because I had Kefka in my hand, but I needed to play it. But instead, he went and got the standing back, forced some blocks, and I had to ditch the Kefka, which was the last six drop in my deck. And I had, like, three Zagnals in play. And so it was just like, oh, man, it was just rough. And, I, you know, those things happen. But, yeah, and then game three happened. Um, I, you know, I – it's weird because I kept my opening hand, and I got to wonder if – I haven't rewatched it. I wonder if there's – the the chat was like, what is he doing? I like I kept my opening right, hand. Turn one Cleon like, go. Turn one Cleon go. Like beat this card, bud. You know, and I know <laughs> that he I know that he can't beat it without spending a great deal amount of resources. And then like once I add Summoner to the mix, it's just over. There were so many turns that game where I just overpaid with for things to keep my summoner open and I just refused to to let him cast his uh Ramus. And I I mean in Hecaton also, like he's just it's not going well. So Right. Yeah, so that, that top four match was a lot of fun. I was happy to win. Um, Ian's a good friend of mine, uh, a local rival, and really fun to play against. But I really hate Alua, and I did not <laughs> feel bad about killing those Aluas. And I'm glad that the stream couldn't hear me at the time. But when when I killed that Alua, no, when the second one hit, I was like, take that, you dirty little bitch. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Yeah, I, was I, I Illua wasn't. Minor, Illua Stinian, Alcid, Game Over. <laughs> yeah, was... yeah, I was just like, whew, thank God. Um, but yeah, so my 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 quarters were, or those my semis, my semifinals were good. Now, in case nobody's seen the post about it, which I'm sure they have, uh, what happened with the finals? Why wasn't that played out? Just kind of clear that air real quick. Uh, a lot of reasons. Um, Mostly, like, when I sat and looked at, like, um, the match on paper. Well, so the, the decision were all quickly made. It was like, you want to split? Yes. Like, snap? Yes. Let's go. I'm ready to go home. Okay, me too. Uh, but, you know, if you if you want to really analyze, like, decisions and the reason being, the match, it's not a two-day tournament like, like the Crystal Cups are. We've been playing um, all day, and we get to the finals, right? And the prizes are stacked so that the top is Ishtola, um, PlayStation 4, like everything goes to first place, basically. Not that the prizes weren't really good. They were really good, but it was very, very heavily stacked towards first. And so you're kind of already taking a gamble by playing it out for everything. Um, and you really don't want to get Alfreded out of the match. Um, and so, like, my decision was really just like, hey, I'm tired. Uh, I kind of want to go or play. I mean, I was willing to play. Don't Don't get me wrong. And Hunter was kind of like, you know, hey, I got to get home to take care of my cat. I'm like, I feel you. You probably knocked everything on the floor by now. <laughs> and so what pursued was like, well, I want – he wanted the Estola, the Play Arts, and the PlayStation. I just wanted the Estola and the PlayStation. And so being able to separate the Estola um, and the Terra Arts um, – oh, sorry. He also wanted the Terra Arts was pretty easily because they're pretty equally as far as um, money goes. Um but then we had to itemize everything else out because then it's like, well, what do you do? The PlayStation is worth like $300. So where do you go from there? And so we ended up, uh, we needed to make sure the split was fair so that um, first place got the higher amount. And so they had to, you know, because that's, that's just how you, when you work out splits, whoever gets in first has to take the higher amount or whatever. And basically, you know, he said, well, I'm also looking for the trophy. And I said, no, that's fine. I said, well, we can split like financially and then we can play for the trophy because I wasn't leaving without it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Hunter was like, well, we're much less interested in playing for the trophy. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, well, that's fine. Um, but I, I wanted to play for the trophy. And um, 
I don't know, people get upset about splits, but like at the end of the day, like we were both tired. And you look at the matchup and it's like, well, I have two Cloud Darkness and three Shantotos, and he has three Ashtola. Like the games are going to go long no matter what. Like there's no way around it. It's untimed. Um, we could play as fast as we want, but at the end of the day, we ended up leaving there at like 10 o'clock, and that's way better than leaving there at like midnight. So. Right. Not to mention, you know, we came with a large group. Our dinner party for when we went out for dinner afterwards was 19 people. And so that's 19 people that are waiting on us to go eat. And, yeah, I mean, I could – I understand why people want to see it played out in the grand finals. But I also just could care less because, like, I've never I've never been like – like, if you look at the second place deck list of a tournament, you're never like, oh, well, that's clearly worse than the first place list, <laughs> right? Or, like, the third place list is not clearly worse than the second place list. And so when people are like, oh, you need to have the grand final deck champion, it's like, well, that doesn't, it's not how it always pans out, you know? So. Right. Right now. So now you're looking forward to Kansas uh, coming up in about two weeks, right? Well, I was already looking forward to Kansas. Is it only two weeks from now? Now I'm, now I'm even more split though, because it's like, well, should I save this deck for Kansas? Like, (laughs) this is not, this is not a deck. Okay. So if you're attending Kansas, this is not a deck that you should play. Like, you should play this at your locals because the deck is very good. I promise you, it's very, very good. I took a lot of time, you know, like a day uh, building it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's very good. But, like, if if you sit down across from someone like me, like, they, and they know what you're playing, you're in trouble, you know? Like, like if they come prepared with their stolas, like, if they're ready to sack their stolas to stop the Cleone trigger so they can heck a ton of Minwoos, you know? Like, if they come ready for the and prepared for the matchup, you're in trouble. And I simply, you know, when I was talking to Mah- Muhammad would be um, the person that I tested the most with, or, you know, I, I know him as Zaim, but um, most people know him as Muhammad. Uh, but I tested the most with Zaim, and I really found, and we talked a lot, and at the end of the day, we just both came to the conclusion that, well, are we going to see Sin at all? No. Okay, then this is the deck to run. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for Zayim, he wasn't able to get the cards in time to run the deck, so he had to stick with his regular deck. Um, it probably didn't help that I was switching lists and, and cards at the very last minute, and I'd be right. I'd be like, "Hey, we need to try another Zag." Well, hey, we need to we need to add this or that, you know. Um, right. So that probably didn't help his confidence in the list at all. <laughs> but that's just how I roll. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we got Kansas coming up in, I believe, twelve days. Yeah. Um, so you'll be coming out for that, correct? And I'm, is I Ian, will. Are you guys riding out with Ian? or? I don't him? know Ian's plans. As far as I know, I'm the only person. I think it's like myself, Colin, Rupert, um, David, Alex, and the four people who top four Kansas, if we don't, that are going to be in this event. Theoretically, there's, there is a possibility of a four-person finals. Um that would be insane and very mathematically um, probably round robin. Yeah. But, but what would actually happen if this were to happen is it would be if the four of us are planning on traveling from out of state show up and we're the only ones to show up, which, you know, depending on price pool could be a thing. Also depending on when they announce price pool, because if they don't announce something soon, it's very unlikely that more people come. That, that, by the way, that doesn't stop me from being excited. Like I'm, 10 out of 10 super excited i get to see cody i get to see jake i get to see ben aaron like i all the locals like man i just i can't even stop naming like patrick ryan like i'm just so excited it's unbelievable it's my is what i look forward to the most when it comes to final fantasy it's not nationals it's not lqs and traveling and you know uh but it, it is kansas absolutely so is there another petite cup this weekend uh to qualify for yeah. kansas or is there a I don't. Be- I don't believe so. I believe that the <clears throat> that RV was the last petite cup before Kansas and then finals. Yeah, so it was. There were six petite cups, correct? Uh, math. I don't know. All right. I was gonna say it's <laughs> Tampa, New York, Canada, RVA, Seattle, Arizona, Arizona. Okay, so yeah, that would be the six there. Okay, I didn't okay. think we had that many yet, but all right, sweet, sweet. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm. I am super excited. I'm booked. I'm ready to go. Um, I know generally the two decks that I'm playing, I will be playing two different decks. I'll be playing one for Friday. Um, oh no, sorry. One for, well, I guess I play one on Friday too. Um, cause we'll have the warm up tournament, but I'll be playing one deck for Saturday and one deck for Sunday. 
two very different decks. <laughs> um, and I don't know the order of them. So one one will be Saturday, one will be Will we Sunday. see Sam play a normal deck or will he continue to play Jank? No. Neither <laughs> Not neither Jank, of them are different. normal. Yeah. Neither of them are normal. Um yeah. Both of them are in popular color archetypes, neither of them are <clears throat> popular decks. So yeah. Interesting. It's fair. Uh also before we wrap up, uh one more question about your deck. Uh sure. Where was Flanded at? <laughs> Where was Turbo Ice at? Oh, yeah, that's true. That's, yeah. Yep. Yeah, if I was going to add Flanded, I would add, um, well, there's a whole different type of variation. Like, you, realistically, if you're going to add Flanded, you'd want it in the, like, an Ice version because you want, um, I think you want things like Gremlin and Sarah L to be able to like Dolan Freezer guys and like find it Schrodinger's Cleones, all those are 13 characters. So then the Dolan Freezer guys It's something I explored. I found this deck to be better. Um, and then when it came down to this deck, like, I mean, you can say the same thing about so many cards, like Jamie Falker asked where, where uh, mirror was right. I mean, where were, where were realms? I mean, I think in the, this picture I sent you. Zach, oh, wow. Realms. You took out the realms. I didn't realize. Whew. Yeah. I mean, no Whoa. realms in my in my monster deck. Um, I didn't have time for realm. Ain't nobody got time for that, man. Oh, like, so that's where the delete on the Galdas came from. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, that's exactly, I didn't actually like, notice. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I guess I just assumed they were there. It was like change blindness where you just assume something's the same. and it's... Yeah. I Well, I wanted ways to... There's two things. With the Galdas, I wanted ways to reoccur the Ozma special. Uh, but more realistic, realistically, both cards, I wanted to be able to deal with like uh, Ishtola. I want to put them in like awkward positions um and delita can kill ishtola with uh the the viking triggers or galdas, um, and it or, or galdas and galdas is just bigger than ishtola so like i can actually just put pressure on them um or block them uh which is actually super relevant um so i just didn't have room for any changes to the list i would have loved to have flandits but you know if again if i were to go with flandits i would probably try and find room for dark kefka um, ways to turn them more into 7Ks or at least have the realms. Um, yeah. I still think Flanded's a good card, but it's better in an aggressive deck or a controlling deck. In other words, like if you're taxing them a great amount in the end game, it's probably fine if you could turn them into 7Ks. Or if you're beating them down and they can't block, it's good. My deck was definitely way more mid-range. Yeah. So. And then I like Galdas with Kafka too. I mean, like you can sacrifice Galdas and get his effects off too. So like realm would that. through that value what's that I, and, and i did that once on mm -hmm. camera i believe you did to steven. um i did it steven yeah and, and there is some controversy actually that i would wanted to cover about that not necessarily with steven steven was really understanding of like when i explained my situation it was really understanding um but it happened at alejandro too and i kind of want to know what the community's um feedback is on this because if you guys watched alejandro's match there was a time where um his opponent played the setzer tapped to five backups, got lock, special, killed Alejandro, and Alejandro had Estola on the board. So, of course, Alejandro's like, well, hold on, I would like to Estola the Setzer trigger. This opponent's like, well, it's way past that. And Alejandro said, what do you mean? Like, you just did that all in one motion. So, I legit want to know what the community thinks about that type of thing, because there are times where it's played too fast. I love Alejandro. He's like, phew, one of my best friends, for sure. Like, way up there. Um, but in this case, I thought that Alejandro was at fault because he didn't respond. He didn't sit there. He, he he had no motion. He just sat there and waited and watched it happen. And, and to his credit, it was only eight seconds um, that the whole thing took place in. Was it eight but seconds? It felt like it was like two seconds. Like when I was watching well that, it, I just... That's what he told me. He said it went back in time and it was eight seconds. But mm -hmm. my point is that when... If I was in that position, I play... And, and my opponent plays the setzer. He played the setzer like legit put it in, in play and then went to tap the five backups and then went to pick up his deck. Even if he needed more time, he should just say, hold on a second. Let me think. Right. That's what right. I like to do is like, uh, hold on. Absolutely. And like, All right, and, so, you're good. and so I guess the argument that some people would make is that you have to pass priority uh, before it resolves, which is absolutely true. Uh, but my response is exactly my response actually is exactly what happened in my match with Steven where every time I play a Viking, I don't necessarily wait for my opponent to say I can draw a card. So against Steven, I played the Layla. I pointed mm -hmm. to the Viking. I, I saw the gestures, play. yeah. I pointed to the Viking to show I was going to draw. I drew, right? At any point, he could have told me to stop. I shuffled my hand a little bit. I went to tap two. I think he knew I was going to play a Schrodinger or, or something. He, he knew the big Kefka was coming in. 
And so he's got the character down. A little bit. He's like, well, hold on. I want to respond to the draw. And I said, well, you know, you, you can't respond at this point. Like, but, but at the same time, he, Steven had a good point that like, when I play Viking, I have to give him time to respond. Um, and, and I would have been willing to have a judge come over and determine had I given him enough time. Um, it's up to interpretation. It's up to the judge. I'm sure it could have gone either way. I think Steven handled it. Like, uh, he handled it really well and understood that, you know, that he, in my opinion, he realized that the Kefka was coming down after it already drawn the card. Um, and then, and, and that's what I think might've happened in Alejandro's case, but it's so hard to remove bias. and so hard to right. see it from that line. Um, and so I, I get it. And either way we should, we should slow down. But realistically, if I, if I waited a full, like Layla Viking, okay. Viking draw. Okay. Like we're, we're taking so much time, right? If my opponent did that, I would actually be like, are you serious? Like, just point to your triggers and do them. I'll tell you when I have a response. Yeah. Like, you don't have to, like, Phoenix. You, I mean, you can't Phoenix bring in the guy and say 3,000. Oh, you can't respond. Of course not. But if you're like Phoenix, Warrior Light, come into play, I'm going to say, hold on a second, response. So I kind of wonder where the community stands on that. Uh, I think both, both arguments are fair. Um, if you say that you have to respond to every single thing, I think – Ruling wise, technically, yes, you are correct. I think logistically, you're insane. It's just never going to happen. <laughs> and if you think that you don't have to give your opponent enough time, they should always interrupt. I would say that's that's not also not the case. There are certainly times when you need to let your opponent um, have a little bit more time. A good, a good example was during my reunion match where I attacked with Yuri Chalinka as a party attack, but I did it so quickly. I said attack step, and he said yes. I party attack with Chalinka, Yuri pointed to my target and he said, well, I want to respond to the part to the, before you attack. I said, well, why didn't you say something? He said, well, I know I let you go into attack step. Realistically, I knew that he had actually just forgot that what it did because he had read my card so often, but I also made that. Yeah. I played that a little fast in that case. I, and I even said something where I was like, that was kind of quick. And like, it, yeah. was, like, it I, was, I understand that that was probably the case where he had no idea, but I, regardless, yes, it seemed kind of quick, but it was on me to slow down my course of play. And so that is why with something like, what I did with Steven, you know, Layla, trigger, Viking, point. You know, you, you saw the motions. I was very clearly announcing my triggers. And it's very possible that William did not do that against Alejandro. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd have to rewatch it. Um, the reason that I thought that he did get enough time is he actually played the spells in the correct order, and that's because he comes from a magic background. He cast the set, sir. Then he doled his backups, at which point I would have frozen right there. No pun intended, set, sir. Um, <laughs> but I would have said, well, hold on. Even if I didn't plan on shoaling it, because nine out of ten times you're not going to shoal of that, right? You're just never shoaling a sensor trigger. If you think about it, it's the right play, but you need a minute to think. And I agree with Alejandro that he needed a minute to think. It's not immediately like the best play, um, right. because you have to think. Like, like first off, I'm going to have to see your break zone and your damage zone and see how many sensors you have. How many have Lost you gone through? Locks, sorry. Yeah. I need to know how many locks you went through. So that is, you know, I would have to go through and see that. And so in that case, William should have given him more time. But I do, I do honestly, so always, the community stands on those times. There's always that little nuance, though. Like, as the person in that position, you're, you, it's the game-winning play. You almost don't want your opponent to have that time because you're like, you don't want them to see your line. Uh, well, no, so I can the, see people getting like, uh, well, I got to do it fast and maybe they'll miss it. No, and... no, no. It's the opposite, though. It's 100 percent the opposite. Oh, I think you so. But want, I'm saying you want your opponent to have way. the most time possible to make that decision, because <clears throat> if you can provide proof, like for me, it was I, I showed my triggers. I don't remember if William did. I, I could say, look, I mentioned the triggers. You didn't stop me. And my first event, I mean, at the reunion event, event I very clearly went too fast. Right. I learned my lesson and I adopted it. I said, you know, I'm not going to allow myself to potentially um, make a mistake like that again. <clears throat> so I learned from it. Um, I hope that William learns from this, but possibly won't because it's it's ambiguous. We don't know. Right. We don't know who's at fault, in my opinion. Right. I mean, Cody, have you gone back and watched it? Which game was that? I'm sorry. Um, uh, Alejandro versus William. William round seven or six. I don't know. It was late in the round, I thought. No, it wasn't. It was early. My bad. It was, was it earlier. Fun? It's the uh, uh, William would be the guy who won the Keyblade, <clears throat> the Keyblade tournament. First, I, the only rounds early that I saw was round one with Trevor. Okay. On ice water. Um, after that, I was at work, so it was kind of like fair I enough. Yeah. To tune in and out. I, but, I, I, yeah, I only caught the end of them. Because um, I just got back in my car after practice. I 
and I think most of my car, like, you know, Ian and, and Alfred and Jacob were all kind of like, yeah, it seemed a little fast. And we'd heard uh, Alejandro's story and I had agreed that, yeah, that does seem like a little shady. Like I would have called a judge. Um, it was only until after I rewatched it that I think I disagree. I think that is not that I think Alejandro is like wrong in his thinking. I just think that it, there's a little bit of biasness, like on second hand, like thinking about it on retrospective, obviously we should sets or we should show the sets are, um but at the time it didn't seem he you know if you watch the video his arms weren't moving he showed no interest in stopping it um i i, I certainly would have you know so the thing is is no in all honesty i probably wouldn't have i would have done nothing and i would have died till the lock special and then i would have been like wait whoops <laughs> because uh, that that line seems so obvious to most people but not when there's a lot of pressure on the line. Yeah, Alejandro sure. drew terribly. You know, he should have never been in that position, but he just had a bad draw, and those things happened. And he had made a really good comeback. Um, and so he's probably very nervous. And if in my position, I'm not saying that he would have missed it, but in my position, I think I would miss that 9 out of 10 times, the the, the search. Because you're, you're almost never – I've never sacked an Estola to it. Well, I have actually. But very seldom do you sack an Estola to a search, right? Yeah, it's it's only been when I do somehow identify the fact that oh wait this is gonna win their like win them the game sure or something but yeah very rarely is that ever like Cody for example would probably be more intuitive on that because he plays a lot of ice and also plays a lot of uh, wind water so he's gonna see that heads up play whereas I don't necessarily mess with either of those colors that often so I'm probably just gonna die to the lock <laughs> I mean. I know that lock exists. And I know it's a category six. I know that Setzer searches it. And I know that I'm at six, but putting that all together instantly, like I'm not searching my, I'm not sacking my Estola so you don't get the search. Right, right. That's how you lose the game, right? <laughs> anyway, so definitely if uh, the community can kind of chime in on that in the comments or the YouTube, I would love that. I'd love to hear what you guys are thoughts on it. I know this go go mixed ways. What I would like to ask is that you put aside any biases towards Alex or William. I don't think either of them were being. Um, malicious i just think that it's a situation it's different your perspective yeah yeah for sure uh well i don't know if this, this isn't gonna be anything contentious i don't think but uh you're wrong I, okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so we we've talked about uh that like i said the past two casts have been a little more you know critique based uh mm -hmm. what do you think future events and future tos could learn from this event to adopt to theirs that like made it go smoother or like what was avoided like what pitfalls were avoided that kind of thing was there anything obvious or was it just an event without hitches like, well let me just say it, let me just say it wasn't a perfect event um, okay. starting 30 minutes late is kind of a big deal um but i would still rate the event 10 out of 10 i mean so what could people learn? Like first have your event in a, a space that has enough room. I think that's like more than, um, should be more than obvious. Right. The staff was incredibly friendly, right? You had two of the best commentators in the world, in my opinion, commentating the games. <clears throat> um, they pulled people in between rounds for interviews and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. I don't know how often they went to break other than the lunch break that they had or the dinner break. Um, but to be fair, that break was for us and we didn't even end up taking it. Like the <laughs> entire top eight decided like, Oh no, we're ready to play. Let's go. Um, but they'd already announced it to be back in an hour. So w what happens is most of your chat leaves to go do their own stuff dinner and then they, they're going to come back in an hour. And then the RBA guys were super nice and decided to take that time to do some like community battles. Um, and so they were giving out some like cards, some chapters cards and stuff. Um, if you wanted to challenge them in title or war, whatever deck you want to do. And they write, they started some drafts. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it really comes down to you're going to put whatever you put into the event is what you're going to get out of it. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, you know, we're, I think we'll see a follow up here uh, similar in, in Tampa. I think that Tampa is going to run a good event. Um, it won't hurt that we have Chris and Adam. Uh, streaming it so <laughs> right for sure yeah i, I really I enjoy the fact specific less the raffles time. are fun yeah the raffles are fun i won dice <laughs> uh the the green blue dice or whatever um <clears throat> i don't love i don't but raffles are like my least favorite thing because i never win so ironically i, I felt good <laughs> this time but um 
yeah, I, I don't know if they could have done anything better. They, they ran a really great event. Like I said, it wasn't perfect, uh, but I've never I've never been to a perfect event period. So right. oh, yeah, for what that's worth. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, the first time the first time I was in Kansas, I had a huge, huge ugh, moment with, you know, one of the staff members who had announced like, oh, and if your stuff gets stolen, you have to pay for security cameras. And I was like, this is so gross. I really can't stand this place. Like, and the, that was my first impression. The whole and, like, you know, the pokemon comment where it's like it's more important than you guys yeah, more important i care about my pokemon customers more than you so don't like it was very <laughs> rude um <laughs> but there are other people that work at the store apparently and those other people are apparently gold right you know just pure <laughs> gold and so taking that for what it's worth kansas is my favorite event so and not even they're perfect not even they have perfect events um so yeah i i have nothing nothing no complaints i do want to say the absolute biggest shout out is to chris adams uh, who took care of us. Uh, he paid for our Airbnb. Um, he, even though he paid for the Airbnb, he slept on the floor. Um, he just really took care of us. Um, and I'm super proud that, you know, thanks to the community um, helping me out, I was able to get him three sets of those master sleeves. Oh, that sweet. Taken from him. So he's now has proud owner of three sets of them. Um, so shout out to, you know, him and, the whole the whole RVA crew for just running such a good event, and also you know before we close off, I do want to say that everyone um, in RVA was extremely nice. It ran for made for an excellent tournament. Like Serena was very nervous about playing because she doesn't deal with confrontation well. A lot of times people can be jerks or dicks or whatever, um, and she had a really good time. All of her opponents were friendly. All of my opponents were super friendly. Um, the least, the least friendly of my opponents was probably my round seven, and I think he was just nervous on the back foot, had no idea what I was playing, and he was still friendly. So the least, the least friendly person was still friendly. Yeah. So it was good. Uh, if you guys want to know more about the deck specifically in my round matchups, I'm going to do a video here in a little bit um, that'll go into a lot more detail. But awesome. So look forward to that, guys. And yeah. uh, I think that just about wraps us up. Uh, once again, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Cards of Evil East, for sponsoring the cast. And uh, I've been Cody Snodgrass. I've been Zach Burrell. I am still Sam Snipe Prime. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.